the machines are silent in this practically abandoned industrial site, a common occurrence since 2011. In Nerdeyev in the southwest of Tunisia, protesters have blocked phosphate production. Locals haven't seen the wealth created by these natural resources reinvested back into their community. Here, the unemployment rate is 25%. Unemployment is still rising. We keep waiting for government decisions, and empty promises come one after the other, and there's a feeling of being deceived. That's why young people are suffering, because their expectations aren't being met. The phosphate sector, lucrative before the revolution, is now in crisis. Towns like Rdeif were only developed around mining operations with no other job prospects for the younger generation. Since the revolution, youth unemployment, as high as 36% for those under 25, has been a challenge. There are more than 200,000 university graduates without work. In Sahira, near Sfax, protesters have been camping out for a month near the industrial zone, demanding jobs. We are not in confrontation with the state. We are only asking for our rights, the right to work, which is protected by our constitution. Our strike comes after a long period of disappointment, when in the end, no one really offered us solutions. To respond to these demands, the parliament adopted a clause in its 2021 budget which aims to hire 10,000 unemployed university graduates who have been out of work for more than 10 years. Right after the revolution, the state hired more public workers. Today, paying their salaries amounts to more than 14 percent of the country's GDP. The legislator Hatem Liki abstained from voting. For him, such emergency measures aren't the solution. We can't be against the social spirit of this measure, but for me, personally, I would have liked there to be a preliminary study into certain sectors of the civil service, certain areas or fields where there could be more training so that these people are really effective in their field, that they are not just ghost employees in the public service. The city of Gasrin was one of the first to revolt in 2011. Here, some see private investment as a way to develop the region. But after the revolution, security forces retreated, allowing alarmed groups to fill the vacuum, especially in the mountains near Gasrin. This hurt local industry, according to an entrepreneur who works in the refining marble from the mountains. We are just at the foot of Mount Shambi, which used to be an idyllic place to be. But since 2013 and the terror attacks, the repercussions have been hard. There were bombings, there were attacks. In the industrial zone, more than half of businesses have closed or have reduced their operations due to the health crisis. Juanes Miseo is hoping for a development policy from the government. He thinks non-coastal regions have always been left out, despite the revolution. Past governments didn't focus on developing this region. This is really our biggest concern and our biggest sticking point. In the capital, some young people trapped in the cycle of unemployment are trying to escape through entrepreneurship, an idea in vogue since 2010. Heikel founded a security and maintenance company with only a high school degree and some previous work experience. The revolution gave me an opportunity, because in 2018, when I started my company, the new budget law had just been approved, and it brought many advantages for small businesses. Today he manages close to 60 employees, most of them are young, but hiring more staff is a challenge. Despite offering a salary that's above the legal minimum wage, some young people think it still isn't enough to guarantee a decent quality of life, as inflation and costs of living have far outpaced salaries. The challenges I faced exist in every sector. Many young people don't want to work in this field. When they come for an interview, they first ask how much they'll be paid before they even know what their job will consist of. What am I supposed to do in that situation when they're not even interested in the work? Others are questioning the structural and political problems of a corrupt economy inherited from the dictatorship. The organization Alert broadcasts a program on YouTube to raise awareness about the problems of the so-called rent economy. What is rent? Rent is essentially a latch in the door of the economy. 
These latches are unjust when it comes to the pursuit of the public interest. It's when certain people are allowed privileges, but which don't benefit all Tunisians. So it prevents the market and competition from functioning. C'est un dysfonctionnement au niveau du marché, au niveau de la, au niveau de la, de la concurrence. The country is at a turning point in its democratic transition. The demands of the revolution, social justice, employment and dignity still remain unfulfilled. Today, many Tunisians are calling for a change and radical economic reforms, just as they did 10 years ago.